All right, welcome everyone. Welcome to CORE's AMA. I'm Tobbs, aka Tasha, and today I am joined by Frederick, co-founder and CEO, Jordan, co-founder and chief creative officer, and Arash, uh, chief product officer. And I'm so excited. We've done this once before and it was a lot of fun. And you guys have asked some really great questions. Uh, so without further ado, let's get started. Uh, Frederick, do you wanna kick us off? some announcements uh, yes good morning good afternoon good evening good night everybody wherever you are from it's a super exciting day today uh the opportunity for us to connect even more directly on live with the community community of uh, top creators uh you know it's been just a few months uh that we've launched our creators open alpha and it's been absolutely amazing uh we've seen so much creativity being unleashed uh, we've seen a truly new wave of, of creators joining uh, the gaming world. Uh, lots of folks who didn't even have experience making games. They just had game ideas or ideas for new worlds and new experiences. And here they are today, topping the charts in core. Uh, uh, so it's been, it's been absolutely exciting. Uh, we're looking at some stats today. So we've had tens of thousands of creators already joining core, uh, thousands of games made. And the funny uh, stats is we've calculated we've had over 50,000 hours of, of game creation uh, done in the editor. So lots of time, lots of efforts, lots of love. Uh, it's really a fantastic, uh, fantastic time to celebrate what is already happening in core, though we're still in uh, the creators of Panalpha, still, still in the early uh, days, right? And we've seen uh, just in a few weeks uh, such a variety of game genres already possible in core. We've seen uh, RPGs, uh, mini MMOs, parkour and obstacle course games, farming games, uh, shooters of all sorts, uh, even social games. We have a, 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 a fictionary like game even. We have casual puzzle games, exploration games, and then just purely worlds to explore with your friends. So uh, today we're extremely excited to connect with you, all the top creators in our community and answer all your questions. And we have a few surprises, so maybe we can start with the first surprise. All right, and then Arash, I think you might be up next. No, it's just, uh, we're showing the trailer, I think, no? Oh, the trailer? Sorry, yep. Ah. I'm on it. Give me one second. Arash, you're surprised too, of course. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the surprise is you're going next. Yeah. <laughs> I was surprised, but yeah. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. What a beautiful okay. trailer. It just shows, you know, what, what I was mentioning before that, you know, what we did with this trailer is take a few weeks worth of, of new creations in core, showcasing, you know, all the genres possible, all the games already made by the community, all UGC, obviously. Okay. And then, uh, Arash, I think you are up next now uh, with some highlights from our recent updates to the platform. Yeah, I'll make it very, very quick. I will highlight the biggest and um, the most impactful that we think that we just released is going to be our, the social features that is already live. We're already seeing a lot of uh, communication, connections, social integrations between all of the, our players and creators already. So which is super, super exciting. We can go through all of those in more detail with, uh, through the, when we do the AMA. 
Perfect. And then uh, Jordan, I believe you wanted to show off some upcoming new features, some sneak peeks, some Jordan leaks. I always do like to do that. You are <laughs> right. Uh, so let me go ahead and pull up. I mean, one of the things, and we'll get to this, of course, when we uh, start answering some questions. Uh, but, uh, and everyone has seen the social that is out here. I am the most, I feel like I'm the most popular person on core. I have a uh, friend request from everybody. <laughs> I haven't got like, I, I literally just haven't gotten through uh, answering them yet. So I will get, I will get to you when I get to you for sure. Uh, but thanks for all that. Uh, I think people have seen in the, in the, um, in the social that you can actually join people, uh, one click join from the games here and stuff like that. So that's really cool. Upcoming stuff. So you might see a shop tab up here at the top that you don't see on your screen. I have this turned on because I am a developer uh, and we are getting ready to roll this out soon. We'll talk about when that's gonna come out, but it's, it is very soon. And you may have seen me running around with some of these founder pack uh, skins in some of the games out there. Uh, these are super, super cool. Um, they are all kinds of different glowy, uh, which I like, uh, the rim lighting. And of course, because of the mix and match system in core, any of these outfits I can use with any different head, I can mix and match the tops and bottoms, uh, and I can ride around on my golden Palomino, uh, which is also super fun and cool. Uh, we even have this hoverboard. I don't know if you've seen me use this hoverboard in some of your games. Uh, this is amazing. It has a Tron like glowing trail. Uh, that is really, really super cool. So those are gonna be going live very soon. Uh, we also have new skins uh, coming all the time uh, and they'll be rotating it in and out here. Uh, so, and again, with mix and match, you once you once we release this character, you'll be able to use his head and his purple skin uh, on any uh, other outfit that you want. Um, so it's gonna be really, uh, really super cool. I think w w one thing that's important to note and, and, and that feature obviously is very much targeted at everybody including the players, right? Until now, um, you know, we have focused less of our efforts, most of our efforts on, on, on bringing awesome creators. We still keep doing that uh, to the platform, creating new games, uh, new genres even. Uh, and, uh, and, and starting, you know, this week, we're going to start bringing more and more players. And this is really the kicking off like a, a, a long series of features and content for the players um, and those avatars are absolutely absolutely amazing and they should be released in a few days this week so yep uh, and one thing that just to uh, the founders pack is uh, actually they're going to be super super exclusive time limited um skins that um only like um in the our like the founder players and creators are going to be able to have access to so it's going to be awesome yeah, and I think um, you know we 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 started super fast, and maybe I, I, I forgot to uh, to bring a, a even more context to to this AMA today, right? Like this week is a very packed week for for Manticore and for the community. Obviously, we have recently announced the 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 one million dollar uh, creators uh, program, and you know we have a few questions about that that we'll answer in a minute, and that that's really a seminar foundational moment for the community because we we want God to be of course an amazing creativity self-expression platform you know bringing new games and bringing new creators to to gaming but we also want God to be an economic platform so a place for for creators from all over the world uh to make money to make a living uh to engage with their audience to bring their audience and engage with them and monetize right that's very important this week also we're releasing as i was mentioned a, a slew of features uh, really for everybody, but you know, mostly for players, especially the social features. So we already covered that a little bit. And we have really a, 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 a very deep social features pipeline coming and starting this week with the, the friends list, the one click join, uh, the chat, so on and so forth. And of course, uh, we are going to start releasing a lot more for the players. So avatars, obviously, we already mentioned that. I think it's a very, uh, it's a very, uh, very important uh, step uh, for the community to be able to have new avatars, and uh, that's going to generate like I think lots of lots of interest from from players. Uh, this week we're also releasing a new uh, portion, a new expansion of the sci-fi pack. We will talk about that more in a minute, uh, and so on and so forth. So we have we have quite a few things in the pipeline this week, both for for creators and for for players. So what about we just um, jump right into the AMA part? I think it's time to ask me anything, <laughs> almost anything. You're ready for the questions. Uh, we do have two announcements real fast. Um, Jordan, do you want to talk a little bit about uh, the boot camp coming up? 
or I can cover details um, as well. Mm. Yes, uh, yeah, so we, we, we had our first boost camp and it was super, super um, awesome. And all the almost all the people in there uh, are actually, uh, you know, obviously still remaining in the core platform, uh, but they really leveled up their skills and it's been a great, uh, I think, thing for both the community and in thus for the games that are coming out. So we're running a second one in the fall. Uh, and Tasha, if you have the if you have the dates and the, the details, that would be fantastic if you could I if you could bring do. them up. Uh, it's uh, I think the the, the thing to uh, highlight also with the boot camp is it's it's a it's a big investment on all parts because we really want to help the the, the community. SPL had new creators. And um, you know, new creators who maybe didn't think they could make games, um, and I think, as evidenced by you know, the, the, the the folks who are managing our stream and, and, and our marketing team, who uh, for the most part were actually interns last year, uh, the bootcamp is kind of an extension of this um, desire for us to help the new creators come to gaming and level up their their games. Um, and the last bootcamp was a tremendous success. We had. I think close to 200 applicants and um, we selected a dozen of them and, and, and we had actually a great great uh, geographical spread from people from all over the world, Australia, uh, Scandinavia, uh, all our parts of Europe, uh, several people of course from the US, from all over the US, also a wide age uh, range uh, going from 19 until I think uh, in the late 50s, uh, people who had never made games before but really um were able to, to to shine on the platform and then apply and then win a spot in the boot camp uh, we're also a half half women and half men which was pretty pretty cool um so yeah so uh if that interests you oh, by the way it's free um so it's a crash course uh in game dev uh, from industry professionals uh workshops and such um you can apply from now until august 5th when applications close and if you want more information or to apply you can go to learn coregames.com slash bootcamp. And then one last announcement before the AMA, uh, we are having a spaceship and mech jam. Uh, so this is a contest with a thousand dollar prize pool. Um, so you'll be, you'll be building spaceships and mechs uh, with our new spaceship parts or whatever you want to build them out of, honestly. And for more information on that, you can go to our Discord server, which is linked uh, in our Twitch bio. So let's move on to the questions. I'm so excited. Um, and I think you guys are too. And I think everyone else is. Uh, so let's get to it. Um, I thought let's start off with how it all started. Um, when was Manticore first founded and were there other game ideas you considered making or was the plan to build core all along? And this is from NAR. Yeah, so it's a, it's, it's a very, very good question. Um, so we were started uh, late 2016. We've been working on core for, I believe, almost three years now. Uh, and the way it came about is really very, very simple. Originally, we uh, wanted to create a new generation, a new wave of uh, online, real-time multiplayer games. Um, and from the get-go, we really embraced the idea of having an, an open development philosophy, an open community for, for modding, for feedback, etc. So very early, we said, look, whatever game games we, we will be making, uh, we should create amazing tools so that we can deploy the content, create the content, contribute it, uh, and in turn share it with the community super fast. Uh, we should also make all these tools available to the community, and we should also allow the community to contribute back, you know, through mods or, or variations, conjugations of all the games, the mod, the maps, the content we'll be making. And uh, then we said, well, we should also allow them to collaborate, we should also allow them to publish. We should also make it very easy for them to not just create and iterate, but also publish and publish with uh, native multiplayer code. We used to make MMOs and all sorts of real-time multiplayer games and multiplayer coding is really, really hard. So we, we said that and then we said, well, we should also have a way for them to, to, to monetize and make a living. And then really quickly we realized, hold on, uh, there is a bigger idea here than just making a game and Even a sandbox game, right? We said it would create the sandbox of sandboxes uh, and to really meta or, or thinking about what we're building. And that's how the ID for car uh, started, you know, a, a, a UGC uh, service that allows you to, 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 to create, edit, share, publish, iterate super fast, super easily. And of course, also make money 
uh, make a living. Uh, and then for the players, obviously, it's uh, an endless, you know, arcade, uh, an endless uh, multiverse where you have uh, all sorts of games possible. And also the invitation, obviously, for the players to contribute and create. And maybe, as Sam said, the idea, well, actually, maybe I can make my own game or I can uh, contribute with our creators to uh, creating new games, new experiences. That's how it started. Okay, awesome. And then uh, kind of a follow-up question to that. Um, why Unreal Engine? And this is from Auto Heroes uh, V, yeah. or Auto Heroes 5. And I think J Jordan has a, has a good answer for that. The, 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 the main intro to that is, look, it's, it's, it's an amazing engine. It's, it's uh, you know, we, we did lots of research about what would be the best game engine um, to create the ultimate uh, experience we to create with Core. Uh, both for the creators and for the players. We even consider making our own engine, believe it or not, crazy, crazy us. And, you know, it was obvious that Unreal was the best choice for us and we've never looked back. It's been absolutely amazing. Um, yeah, joy. yeah, wow. absolutely. And um, yeah, we looked at all engines. We, As Frederick said, we looked at even creating our own engine uh, potentially. Um, and, you know, we tried everything out and it was really unreal was really the one that sort of hit us as the right one for this particular platform. Uh, and Epic has been a fantastic partner. When we first switched to uh, using Unreal, uh, they actually flew a couple people out to help us get started on it. We had never used Unreal Engine before. We had made games in other engines. Uh, and it was been, it's been a super great partnership with them, you know, uh, uh, working on their engine uh, and uh, building this whole entire platform. Uh, we couldn't be happier. Also, also looking at, you know, that's one of the questions, right? Looking at um, launching core on more platforms, uh, you know, um, mobile and consoles, etc. Like, like I think the choice of Unreal is even kind of uh, ultra confirmed uh, for the ease of, of doing that for us, for, 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 for playing games in core. The, the, the editor, as we mentioned before, is likely going to be on PC uh, for now, but... All right, so we've talked a little bit about uh, the origin story. Um, let's talk about the future and what's coming up. Um, are there any plans to release a public roadmap? And this is asked by, uh, this has been asked by uh, many people. Yeah, I can take that. Um, the short answer is yes. Um, um, obviously we want to make sure that the community and everybody is aware of what's coming. We take this very, very seriously. And um, it's important for us to showcase the accurate and a predictable roadmap. So we're working on it and it will be available very soon. Awesome. All right. Um, here's another uh, quite popular question I see a lot. Um, any plans for monetizing community content? Um, yeah, I, um, I can take that one as well. So um, we, are, we have definite plans to monetize uh, templates. Uh, it's going to be separate than community content itself. So imagine like some sort of a um, um, asset store, quote unquote asset store, that it's through the uh, template, but it's going to be separate from the community content. So it's a whole new feature. I think the the uh, the the, um, the 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 context uh, the context also for that question that I'd like to address is you know. Obviously, as you already understood, right, Core is an amazing platform to, to, to create new content, bring new, new creators to gaming, new games, new game genres. And also, uh, it's an economic platform. So we want um, the creators to be able to uh, not just make games and manage them as live services with all the tools we provide, uh, but also manage their kind of the, 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 the publishing and the, the social engagement part of the um, of, of, of with their, of their audience, of the service with their audience, uh, bringing their, their, being rewarded for bringing their players, their audience to core, but also engaging the, 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 the audience already in core. Uh, as part of that, we really want to create a um, kind of a, a, a multi-model uh, series of revenues for the creators, right? And we already, I think we've shared, you know, the creators We'll have uh, access to uh, uh, various ref share programs, uh, patronage, uh, also you know this upcoming uh, marketplace uh, feature that of course is going to be evolved. As you understand, like lots of the things we are launching and doing are going to evolve. Right, you see version point zero one, and then sometimes you see version one point zero. But even when it's one point zero, we are always working on on more features for the creators. 
to 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 monetize and create a, a strong economic platform and incentive for them to to be to be in course. So we will have more and more of these features um, to allow them to create, engage, but also also monetize, and that that's one of them. Awesome. So sooner than you think. Oh. Cool. And then speaking of further on monetization, can you share any um, more details on monetization strategies uh, coming both for games and for core itself? Yes. So um, I think w w one thing that's uh, very important to understand, obviously, is, you know, we, we're operating a, a service, we're operating an ecosystem, you could argue a marketplace. Uh, on the one hand, you have creators uh, making awesome content. And on the other hand, you have the players. And in the middle, you have lots of super interesting things happening, right? The, 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 the creators have multiple ways to engage with the audience uh, and, and really be advised to uh, create the very best content they can. And also bring their audience, if they already have an audience outside of core, or find and foster and nurture their own audience inside core. So there are lots of things at play here between the act of, of creativity, the act of creation, uh, the act of collaboration among creators, even um, the act of iteration. Uh, core is by far the fastest uh, uh, game creation uh, service out there to iterate, right? You can make changes to your game in just a few seconds, in a few minutes. You can make massive changes in a few minutes. You can also open your game to the community for feedback, for uh, suggestions. Also, you can just give them the game and say, what about you? You change the rules. What about you change the map? What about you? You add the weapons. You add the the the, the player count, or you change it. And so there is this new form of interaction uh, between the creators on on the players. And then the players, obviously, for them, it's an endless series of choices. And um, right there, there's this idea of a marketplace of ideas for for game creation with very fast iteration, very fast actions, very fast innovation. We've seen that already just in the last weeks. Now. Um, you know, the, the, the way this ecosystem works from an economic perspective is actually very simple for, um, you know, core is free to play, free to create. That's something very important to, to remind everybody, right? It's, 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 there is no, we're not setting expansions, we're not setting packs for the creators and for the players. It's all completely free, completely open for both the creators and for the players. It's very important, free to play, free to create. Um, and then... The way it works is actually very simple. On the on the front end with the players, it's very much akin to I would say a, a free to play game uh, mixed with a bit of Twitch and a bit of YouTube. Right, as a player, uh, it's free to play and you have access to various programs, various cosmetics that you can you can buy. Right, so uh, the founders pack this week is uh, the launch of that. Right, if you're interested, if you want to have this access to this very exclusive content, it's really cool emotes, avatar, et cetera, well, this is the founder's pack for you. And that's just the beginning. We have we have ton more uh, cosmetics, pets and mounts and uh, uh, avatars, et cetera, coming up. Um, and so for the players, you know, you have access to these cosmetics, you have access to various programs, I would say akin to, um, you know, battle passes and season passes. Uh, you can also give direct patronage to uh, the creators. It's gonna be uh, arriving very soon. Uh, whether it's a, a subscription, you subscribe to a creator just like you would on Twitch, uh, and you can give also direct uh, directly to to the creators. Um, and we also have uh, a, you know platform level subscription uh, at some point. Uh, we also have, of course, the marketplace. I already mentioned that. That's that's more for the creators. And then for the creators, uh, you know, there are multiple ways to 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 make revenue. I think fundamentally, we want to reward. Uh, quality, want to reward high quality games as defined by whom? As defined by the players. We are all here to serve the players, uh, Manticore as well as the creators. So uh, high quality games, is it the graphics, is it the gameplay, is it the music, is it the experience? Is it the fact that you start something and every day you, you update it? We've seen that already with some games in the community Then some creators started a game on their own then grouped with one or two more creators and then Holy moly, every day there is a new level, there is a new dungeon, there is a new uh, series of quests that you see in their game. So uh, for the creators, the, the, the economics incentive is really around creating the best games, creating the best experience for the players as defined by the quality of the gameplay, the engagement, the retention, and all that. So um, 
that's why it's it's so exciting the way we've built this ecosystem where everything is is really interrelated and 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 working toward um, uh, uh, better and better games, better and better expense for for everybody. Maybe Raj, do you want to add anything? No, you. Yeah, I think you summed it up actually perfectly. Um, the like just to go. Uh, yeah, I think you summed it up. Um, just one minor thing about the just go a bit more tactical about it is. Um, in a feature wise, we're going to have a, a, what a, a Frederick called that. It's a perk system that you can um, provide uh, in game benefits to your players. Um, then there's going to be a patronage program that um, there's a benefit and reward for the players to supporting you. And then there is a rev share program, which is uh, in the vein of the payout program that we are already having and it's already live, that it's 100% uh, merit based and uh, it's based on. Um, how um, um, based on the love of the uh, players to your games, uh, to put it um, nicely. All right, and um, one of the ways Core is going to make money is, um, as mentioned, releasing emotes, mounts, characters. Um, how often can uh, players and creators expect to see new content um, in the so, in the shop? Yeah, yeah. So, so. Um, the first batch, as as you can see on on, on the screen, is coming out like um, in, in next couple of days. So we were hoping to actually release the store earlier, but um, we want to make sure that it's perfect and pristine. So uh, it's going to come out, um, I would say, um, between tomorrow and um, um, early next week. Um, the um, but we always have continuous. We have an an exciting portfolio of cosmetics that is all planned and all coming. It's going to be ongoing. We're going to move into seasons that every seasons and every themes and everything that is going to be released in a continuous fashion. So it's honestly, it's super exciting. The way we look at it internally, we say like, okay, these are fine. Let's release it. Let's go. Let's play and let's use them. Um, you guys are going to be um, like surprised at how awesome some of these are, uh, items are. Awesome. Okay, cool. I can't wait to see what uh, characters are in store. Um, moving on to the next question. Uh, this is one we get a lot across all of our social media platforms. Are you planning on adding a way to import our own 3D models? Yeah, I'll take this question because this, this is a really good question and it's uh, definitely one of the most popular ones we see, especially in the Discord uh, when, when new people come into the platform. Um, we would rather actually provide uh, ways for you to make your own models inside of core rather than having to make a model outside of core and import it in. And so that is where the spaceship, uh, the sci-fi set comes in. That is where all these you know tile sets and everything we make uh, come in. And the fact that you can very easily in core put those together and replace the materials on them, you can make anything you can possibly imagine. Frederick, maybe this would be a good time to show the spaceship trailer uh, as an example of that. That. Uh, Please. Okay. Don't have to ask. All right. Let me uh, let me let me go out. So we just uh, in the last release on Tuesday, we, we released a bunch of these sci-fi spaceship parts, and uh, a few people on the team put together this you know this great little trailer showing how to use those. Uh, Tasha, I think some of your designs are in this. Yes. Yeah. I was gonna say thank you. It was so fun to create uh, these ships for the trailer as well. Awesome. So you can see there the, the you know the creativity uh, possibilities are sort of endless uh, with the pieces that we make and uh, 
you know, and I think it's really especially uh, visible in some of the previous contests we ran. Um, we, we've especially the through the looking guys contest. Uh, if somebody uh, wants to jump into maybe uh, scattered woods, uh, I will load that up and you can sort of really see how much um, uh, creativity is possible with inside core itself. And you don't have to have any other. I mean, this is one of the reasons why I think that core is such a. Um, um, force multiplier for game creation is that in a traditional game, you know, I'm going to get a little technical here. In a traditional game development pipeline, you'd have to use a myriad of tools and different people and special uh, uh, specialties. So you would start with a concept artist and then you would go to 3D Studio Max or th to Maya and, you know, Substance Painter and Photoshop and all these things. Core is really a one-stop shop for game creation. You can do everything you can do in those programs basically by kit patching stuff together in Core. Uh, and this is something that we've been really sort of leaning heavily into. And I think that is proven that uh, this is a really good way to go. It also helps on the technical side, make it so you can jump into games very fast. And um, I'm gonna go ahead and jump into uh, the scattered woods here uh, and show you the level of quality that uh, can be created. Uh, again, just using um, just using Core without importing any models. Whoops, I fell and somehow got stuck. There we go. Wait, no, I'm still stuck. There we go. Here we go. Uh, oh, let me switch my screen. Yeah, yeah that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> well, good. You didn't see me get stuck. All right. Uh, so this was the winning entry into our Through the Looking Glass contest. And uh, it, you know, it, it even blew us away. And we know what is possible on the platform. At least we think we knew what was possible on the platform. Uh, and when we saw this entry, uh, we just really... Um, couldn't believe sort of uh, the, the promise of, of creating uh, full game experiences, full experiences in core with no extra 3D software is really being fulfilled. Um, so that's the sort of long answer to that question. Um, now that all said, depending on how creative you are, you can get or you can sort of bend a core to your will. So some some uh, creators have made their own uh, procedural model generation using, uh, they actually used a wedge shape that we have as a triangle and, and made models of that. So you can sort of really make core do anything you want. Uh, so that's the long answer. Awesome. And then uh, Witcher Silver uh, commented in Twitch chat that the audio in the Spaceship and Mech trailer is available in Core for you guys to use. So the trailer was truly created with Core. Um, and then shout out, of course, to Matthew, uh, our sound designer, who is incredible. Um, and speaking of sounds, this is kind of in the same vein of uh, features people would like to see in Core. Are there plans on adding a music editor um, or character animator um along those lines yeah. more creation tools. no that's a great question and um and along the same lines of that let me show something real quick here whoops uh let me get uh there we go uh, i'm gonna go to this game uh mining mining magnate whoops and show that that they've imported their own music so uh, just like you can sort of be very creative and make your own models in core, uh, these enterprising uh, developers uh, put their own audio in uh, by basically importing a MIDI file. Um, and uh, give me one second. I think my internet is maybe being a little bit slow here. So I might quit out and come back in real quick. Hold on one second. Hopefully, I'm still on stream. Uh, you can still hear you and see you. Okay, are, good. I don't, OBS we is, keep OBS flickering is. on and off, though. OK, give me one second. Video feed. Sorry about that. I think OBS. I'm running OBS and Zoom and uh, uh, Core all on the same system here. So traditional streamers, I think, have um, lots of computers. Anyways, I'll show that later. Perfect. Okay, um, moving on to our next question. Um, here's another popular one uh, I see asked a lot. Do creators own any uh, creative domain uh, IP or things created on the platform or does Manticore own everything? Yeah, that's a great question. I will take it also. Uh, creators uh, own their IP. So that was something we felt really strongly about and we wanted to um, uh, put out there is that any I original IP that you invent uh, and implement on the core platform, you own, uh, you own it. Um, 
and uh, we retain all the assets, so all the 3D models that we have put into the core uh, uh, application, the core program, uh, but you own the IP that you come up with. Excellent. Um, will users be able to customize the theme of the core website app to change the colors and such? So uh, I can take that. That's so one one thing that is super interesting about that is um, we want creators to um, have their their identity. They showcase, become the celebrities with their communities and everything. So we will provide um, capabilities that, um, like for example, their creator um, um, the pages or their game pages to customize those, we will. Um, that's coming um, fairly soon as well. Awesome. Um, are there plans for built-in team creation and management slash team published games? And that's from Fear the Dev. Um, yes. Um, so that one is a yes as well. I, um, we've been thinking about this um, for a fair amount of time. Uh, we want, again, like, great games and great experiences on the platform and continue that like so far that we already have. And we will provide more capabilities towards um, like um, um, team creation and team management for uh, all our creators. All right, uh, here is hopefully an easy question. Uh, do you plan on making more video <laughs> tutorials to help new people use your engine and make games? Yes, that is a very, very good question. So. Um, a couple of things we already have uh so we've invested a lot and we're still investing a lot in in in, in basically all, all sorts of tutorials and support materials whether you are an experienced uh game creator an experienced developer even uh, or you're completely new right and i think uh you should definitely visit all the you know the the, the whether it's in in the client on the website uh, all the related resources we have especially the core academy which really uh, teaches you step by step uh, how to make a real time multiplayer game in under 10 minutes. That's uh, one of the first tutorials you should take. We have tutorials about Lua, et cetera. We don't just have written tutorials, we also have videos. We have also a constant stream of streams uh, where we are, we are uh, teaching folks you know, various aspects of, of not just using core, but also in general, game design and lighting and art, et cetera. Uh, so there will always be more of that for sure. And if you have certain topics you would like to see covered, like please tell us in Discord, like come tell us like, yeah, I'd like to see a tutorial about this or, or that. But uh, we, we have new stuff coming out like sometimes almost every day, definitely every week. And Discord also is a fantastic place I want to I want to give a huge shout out and kudos to the community. It's really amazing in Discord to see the level of collaboration, the level of of welcoming, the welcoming spirit, the 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 the, the collaborative spirit, the supportive spirit. Uh, it's it's really amazing. It's it's to see like people answering questions for us, people supporting uh, new creators, welcoming them. Uh, usually when you see a welcome in, in, in Discord, in core, it is not a bot. It's usually a real person and, and more often than not, it's one of our existing creators, one of our top creators, uh, helping not only welcome people, but also helping uh, one another develop their game and, and fixing bugs, etc. Uh, also supporting uh, creativity, the endeavor, the endeavor of creativity, right? Uh, we see that every day someone says, hey, I'm thinking about making that game, but I was wondering if should I, shouldn't I, it's already present on the platform in some ways. And people are like, no, do it. You know, you have a new tech, like, well, how, can, how can I help you? It's, it's really amazing to see the, 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 the this level of community support of all. All right, and then looping back to uh, IP, um, somewhat related, this is a question from Twitch chat, uh, which you guys can be uh, asking questions in there as well. And we'll get around to them. Uh, this is from Mr. Dr. Roboto Man. Um, how do you handle copyright? If someone makes a Pokemon game, for example, uh, how would that be handled? Yeah, it's it's actually extremely simple. Uh, we 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 you know we support all the best practices in that case. So uh, you know we have something called the um, the uh, the the um, the MCA, MCA uh, take down. So you know, if 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 you own the right to something, you can make a request 
uh, to be to to take it down in core, uh, and, and then we will look at it and would execute if it's uh, if it's appropriate and if it's valid. Um, that is an area where um, we decided to invest uh, very early on and think through all the aspects of managing a UGC platform, right? I mean, as you know, there are lots of UGC platforms out there already. So we really wanted to look at the best practices for um, for managing content. And whether it's in Discord, whether it's in the, the, the games, in the chat, et cetera, for us, it's very important to create a, a welcoming and supportive community, starting with the top creators who are on the stream with us today, uh, and then extending that to the players. Um, as, as you've seen already, even in Discord, we're very proactive about the language you use, your attitude. Uh, we want lots of positivity, lots of constructive folks being positive. And of course, we, we, we not take too kindly in any any uh, derogative terms, negative terms, etc. Use one of a very supportive and welcoming community overall, and that extends to everything we do, by the way. So, all right. Um, moving on to a question about visual style. This one is from Dark Dev. Right now, Core mostly focuses on a cartoonish visual style. Um, will this be opened up with models for different types of styles, or do you intend to keep it uh, as it is today? Yeah, that's a great question. I'll, I'll talk about that as chief creative officer. Um, so, we, you know, we, we had a choice to make when we were sort of um, putting together the style of the characters, of course, and also the art assets that we provide. Uh, but we wanted to do something that was somewhat flexible. So you can see when you make something in core, we've had things all the way from, you know, a bright and cheery, uh, you know, um, farm game all the way to something as a horror game where you play as a spider and other players are running around in the dark trying to avoid you. Uh, so you can really sort of, uh, again, sort of uh, bend it to your will. You know, one of the things we say uh, in core is that we, we, you know, we love opt-in complexity. If you want to just make a game in 30 seconds, you can do that with the base assets we provide. And you can literally in 30 seconds make a game that is fully playable multiplayer online. But as you sort of get more comfortable with the platform and you want to go deeper, then you can start to sort of say, okay, well, do I want this to be a cheery game or a dark game or, um, you know, scary or whatever? Uh, and, you know, core is there. You can change the lighting. You can change the materials and get all those different looks. I mean, uh, uh, one uh, qu quick shortcut to answer that question. So look at the, the trailer we released today, right? There is a really wide variety of diverse games, game genres, uh, uh, art style, etc. right? Even, even all the way uh, to uh, 2D games, right? You have like a, one of these uh, brain teaser puzzle games with just numbers, for instance. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, just really, it's really up to you. I think there is a, you know, even when we were talking about the, um, the Dark Alice uh, art contest. We have another contest going on today, actually, still uh, for a few few weeks or a few days, with uh, Tohad, who is a very well-known um, uh, concept artist, uh, actually from France, I think, from the southwest part of France. So, uh, and and it's an invitation to really create like new scenes and new art styles in core, as well as new games, of course. All right, I'm gonna move on to some more technical questions now. Uh, what performance optimizations are coming to core? And this is from Luck of oh. Buck. Um, um, I can quickly stab at that. So one, um, just wanted to emphasize this. So we look at quality in three dimensions, game quality in three dimensions. One, obviously there's a visual quality is awesome. There is the gameplay uh, quality and the other one is performance quality, right? So this is like a pillar for us that we're continuously working on. Um, so in a very, very near short term, there is two major um, um, tools and features are coming. One is uh, mesh merging, uh, which is going to be, it's a fantastic tool to um, help you optimize and make your games more performant. The other one is we're adding more tools into the performance tab of the, um, uh, of the editor, for example, profiling. The thing is, this is why this is so important as well as Frederick already touched based on, we are and we will go into other platforms, right? Mobile and, and um, consoles. And to be able to do that, we wanna provide good and a very in, 
in-depth um, features for you guys to actually optimize, be able to optimize uh, your games for different type of, um, like let's say, uh, um, uh, platforms and actually uh, products as well. I think also maybe maybe it's, it's a, a, a technical question for 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 Jordan. Uh, you know, it, it's it's also like in terms of, of performance, right? Uh, we 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 actually have tutorials and we have tools to help creators manage their own performance, right? Uh, uh, the, the the performance, the graphical performance of their games. And I don't know if Jordan, you have a you have it's more it's more your realms. Yeah, for sure. Um... Yeah, we have tools. Obviously, we have performance tools uh, in, inside that show you the number of object counts, the number of network object counts you have and stuff like that. Uh, they also simulate sort of different machines of different spec levels. So you can actually see no, no matter where your machine is on the on the um, spec, you can see how the, your game would behave on other machines. Uh, so that's really useful, too. Um, there's, of course, and, uh, you know, and again, I, we can't sort of stress it enough for the creators. Uh, the Discord is a fantastic uh, resource. To, there's people are so helpful in there. People who have made all kinds of different games are hanging out in there all the time, ready to answer questions. Uh, also. All right, and then a follow up question to that. This is from Void Z. Um, when will cores start being optimized for other devices that can't run it well? Yep, it's a great question, and uh, we definitely plan to go to other devices and other platforms in the in the in the future. Um, like we said, we're sort of focusing on creators and PC right now, uh, and then as we sort of expand into into more platforms and, and more players, uh, that will be coming you know soon. <laughs> Excellent. All right. Soon, TM. Uh, will creators be able to make a single release uh, which supports PC, mobile, and console, or will players need to make, or will creators need to make separate releases or projects for each platform? And this is from Wave Paradigm. Yeah, it's a very, very good question, and um, it, there is a technical aspect to that. But um, you know, from a, from a, a high level perspective, again, like I want to reiterate, we will be. On new platforms sooner than than you think, right? I think it's, it's something you you probably have seen from us. We move at, at at very fast speed in terms of adding new features for the creators, for the players, and, and for us, it's also important to be on on multiple platforms. So that's going to happen sooner than you think. Uh, now, from a technical perspective, I don't know if we can already answer that, Jordan, but the idea would likely be that it's going to be super easy for you to you know create one game, optimize it for all platforms, and um, yep, absolutely. We also support controllers right now, even on the PC. Uh, so that will extend, of course, to, uh, you know, if we go to consoles um, and other platforms. Uh, and the plan, I think, is to have them all be uh, same backends uh, so you can kind of cross play uh, where possible. Some, you know, some platforms don't don't really like cross play as much as other platforms, but our intention is to be as cross play as possible. Excellent. OK. Oh, this was another very popular question. When is multi-game storage coming? And this was asked by Oscilix and many others. Yeah, this is definitely a technical question and I'll answer it. Um, so multi-game storage is what will allow you to sort of have one game that uh, spans or uh, multiple different game servers. So if you wanted to make, say, an MMO where each different area was a uh, different game server, multi-game storage would allow that to be possible. Uh, and it is it is also coming soon, TM, but sooner than you think. Definitely sooner than other platforms. Uh, so, you know, that is something that we are planning uh, to use ourselves, of course, and so we, we were going to, you know, we, we, in the in tech industry, we call it dog fooding. We're going to dog food that feature where we test it ourselves and make sure it's palatable before we give it to the players. Uh, so that's coming soon. Excellent. All right. Um, so this was a question that was asked uh, before our recent update. Um, and this was asked by a lot of people, what social features can we expect to see added decor? Um, I'm going to amend this to what other social features can we expect to see in core? A lot. <laughs> yes, awesome. That it's, is very, very true. You know, it, whether it's the creator or the players, like this, the social aspects of what we do is probably one of the most important things, right? The collaboration, the operation, et cetera, between the creators, among the creators, the creators and players, et cetera, and among the players. So we have... That is an area where we're investing quite heavily and you can see already version 1.0 of that that was released this week. Uh, so you can imagine where, what are the next ones, right? And maybe Arash can be a, a yep. bit specific. 
Yeah, so um, there's a couple of um, very, very near-term stuff. So one of our goals is for all the creators to promote their games to their communities easier, so be able to easily share their games out. Um, one other thing is we already added a very robust friend system, but we want to now you be able to, and the players to be actually bring their um, like friends in. So that connection from outside, um, we are a multiplayer uh, ready platform as we, as all of you know. So um, one big feature that we are going to work on is like parting up and grouping up. So you can actually follow each other within like, not only one uh, with one of your friends, but actually with a group of your friends. And, and actually many, many more. So we are, this is one of the pillars of, uh, uh, for the platform. We will continuously add more social features. I mean, if All you right. think about the best, the best practices in terms of social today, whether it's uh, top games, MMOs, et cetera, that, that's what we're aiming for and, and more. All right, uh, next question. This is from Little Cat King. Uh, will there be improvements coming to the in-game chat filter? Yes, I think the short answer to that is yes, for sure. Um, and uh, it's it's imperfect right now, but it's again, as Frederick said, it's one of these uh, 0 0.1 features where we want to have it in, and then uh, we will work to improve it as, as time goes on, and especially as we get more players. Uh, right now, because we're focused so heavily on creators, uh, we... Uh, uh, hopefully correctly assume that our creators are going to be uh, good actors. Uh, uh, but as we get more players and more players, uh, we'll definitely improve that. Awesome. Oh, hopefully this is a very easy one for you guys. Um, what is your favorite uh, core game right now? And this is from Elisa. Actually, this one might be kind of hard. <laughs> yeah, this one is definitely hard. There's, I don't want to play favorites, uh, literally favorites, uh, but there's so many good ones going on. I mean, I can name almost every one that I've been playing. Uh, the most recent one was Freeze Tag, uh, which was made by the creator yes. who uh, also made um, Gravity Dome. Uh, and that mm -hmm. is actually Dreamweaver. A, Dreamweaver. That is a surprisingly deep game. Uh, there's definitely strategy on it uh, yes. when you're playing teams on when you use your cooldowns and stuff like that. Obviously, I've been playing a lot of Mining Magnate. You see me in there all the time. Um, uh, you know, Rollum. Uh, my my six year old is actually. Don't tell anybody he's on the platform. But uh, my six year old is uh, uh, a. He is a celebrity in Rollum. Uh, every time he goes in there, people see him. <laughs> Uh, and say hi to him, uh, and he plays a awesome. lot of role. Um, what else? Uh, yeah, just so many that, I mean, and there's new ones every day. Yeah, uh, Frederick Arash, do you want to chime in on this, or is this one uh, too hard? Where about you go, Arash? Yeah, I've been spending so much time on Rolem, so um, I love it <laughs> because it's so like. I love the progression that was added to it. It's I'm trying to get better uh, marbles and everything like that. So that's the one that I've been like spending a lot of time on and it's super addictive. Love it. Oh, geez. And <laughs> it's a trick question. It um, is. <laughs> there are so many games, so, um, so many great games uh, that, that I, I really enjoy playing every day. We see, you know, the, the farmer's market I love because you have to go uh, collect your uh, your crops and uh, fish, etc. My kids love it. Roll them, of course, is amazing. Uh, Shadowverse. Um, mm, yeah. And uh, what is the other one? Because uh, the name changed at some point. Minecore. Minecore. Mine it, it's it's not just my favorite. It's, I have a seven year old and a four year old, and this is also their favorite games because they they totally get it. Do some kind of like MMOs. We've done mini raids in there and they change every day well, that is your, the other thing that is amazing right some some creator ask us like hey what what makes a successful game on the platform and i would say it's it's really up to you and to you know the the, the larger and larger pool of players we're going to see uh but it's a lot about it's not just about the initial idea the initial idea doesn't really matter quite frankly it, it doesn't so we can see okay we got that question this morning Oh, I don't know. Should I wait to have a super original ID? Well, guess what? It's probably not that original. Probably a million people already had it. It's not about that. It's about the execution. It's about the persistence. It's about the uh, creating the engagement and comp constantly up updating your game, right? And engaging with your community or and or making a series of games and linking them together with the portals. So what we've seen with Shadowverse on, on, on um, Minecraft, there is something new in there, right? You don't even know what's going to happen. The, the game 
the, 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 these games I enjoyed a few weeks ago have completely changed today. Like the, the initial experience, the, the, the advanced experience, there are more, more dungeons, more quests, uh, more, more, more animations, more way to, 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 to do combat. Um, you know, I really like the, um, uh, the, 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 the Pictionary like game also uh, that was made by, I think, the, 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 the bootcamp participants. Uh, I think that was a, quite an amazing, uh, an amazing game. It's lots of fun. It's also very different. Uh, what else? Uh, oh my goodness! Like so it's like many, it's uh, like picking which is your favorite kid. It's just it's too hard. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, there, there are also a few good shooters for sure. The 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 the, the uh, sorry the freezing game. The what's the name? Um, yeah, freeze tag. Freeze tag is just. It's just amazing. Um, there was another one I played yesterday. I'm blanking. <laughs> I'm blanking. All right. Um, I'll move on to the next question. Um, are there plans for more robust controller support from Wave Paradigm? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, and yeah, the answer is absolutely yes. Uh, recently, we did it as a hot fix, actually. One of the, one of the um, comments we got in the Discord was that people with non-corded uh, keyboards, so especially the French have a lot of uh, a zerty keyboard where A and Z are the top two keys, a lot of the games were harder to play. So we actually did a hot fix for them where they could remap all those keys. Uh, along the same lines, we're gonna do the same thing for controller where we'll have a layer where both the creator and the player can set what mappings they wanna have um, and make it very, you know, very easy to play any game on the controller. Even with that hot fix we did for the keyboard, we added some more controller input controls. So you should be able to play most of the games right Right now on controller uh, most of the buttons are mapped but we will uh, actually give that power to the creators in the future all right excellent uh, oh here's another wonderful question from wave paradigm are there any types of games you'd like to see on core but you haven't seen yet hmm. very easy answer it's up to you yeah. you tell me right? <laughs> um, because us we already have such a plethora of game genres represented and yet Every day, every week, there are new games being made. Uh, whether they are mini games, whether they are more like experimental games. I mean, uh, what was the name of the game with the spider, uh, Jordan? Sorry, my 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 man is. Uh... Yeah, Spider Bite. Uh, spider Bite is this really cool, you know, yeah, spider simulator. Uh... Gameplay, right? Like it, it was just amazing, and and um, we like the, the the new mining games and the the, the it's just. It's, Sorry, it's just my mind is, is just blown away every time I see uh, the, 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 new, the new game genres represented. And again, like this was one of our first assumptions and instincts is that the traditional, the, tra the, the traditional way the game industry works is actually not very open. It's not, it's gonna sound paradoxical, maybe a bit provocative. It is not that conducive to creativity. It is not because you have so many buyers. My game idea, uh, I'm in, uh, in the traditional game industry, I'm almost incapable <laughs> of uh, incarnating my game ideas. What I have to do, what, well, I guess, which is what I did, is you convince your friends to follow you, start a company, get funding. And then you have all the other buyers, technical buyers, so on and so forth. So uh, I think Core is fundamentally changing all that and unleashing a new wave of creativity like never before, really lowering the buyers to everything that you have to do to make a game in gaming to the point that you can make a game in a few minutes and let alone if you spend a few hours, let alone if you're maybe a larger group of a few days, of a few weeks. So we're going to see new game genres being uh, being created in core for sure, 100%, 100%. There are a few things we used to say as kind of cool anecdotes. Well, you know, what about one of the top games on the platform is made by this 14 year old uh, uh, girl in, uh, in, uh, in Belgium or in Africa. And guess what? We already have this type of anecdotes every day, right? The, we mentioned that the, 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 we have so many anecdotes of new creators who sometimes have day jobs that are like one of them is a, a tank engineer, a real tank engineer. Oh, that's so cool. <laughs> He's made one of the top games in core and now he's working with someone from Australia. They just grouped up to make their game even, even better. Uh, the, the, the winners of the contest for the Alice contest and some of the contests we run are uh, 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 several women who are in, in various places in the world, in, in Dubai, in Russia, in Finland. Uh, uh, some folks are of course from, from France, from South America, like it's, it's really amazing. So my, my point is that we're gonna see, it's just the beginning, right? We've been live, 
with the open alpha for just a few months. And when you look already at the, the, the varieties, diversity, uh, the, 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 the plethora of genres and, and, and creators, just plot it out. And I think it's going to go exponential. So I guess, sorry, long way in answer, but it's really up to you. Yeah. Try different things. I've got another uh, 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 thing too. So uh, one of the, one of the questions we get is: Is core only good for making sort of third person shooters? Uh, and obviously the answer is is no. Uh, and we've seen more and more games come off that are not third person shooters. Uh, what I'm really excited to see come up on the platform is more strategy games, top down strategy games, flight simulators, things like that. I've I've experimented with flight simulators in core. It's certainly possible. And we have shown before um, we've shown before that we're working on this sort of game that is a top-down uh, sort of strategy-like uh, merge game uh, that's going to be super fun. Uh, I think Eric's talked about it on stream. Uh, but look at the—I mean, look at these look at these graphics. The fact that you can do this sort of like Warcrafty looking RTS looking game uh, that's also a merge game is going to be so much fun. Uh, and all these little guys are going to attack. I can even and look at the detail in some of these guys. I'll come pause and look at these. Um, so I think all kinds of new genres are super possible on core, and I can't wait to see the first snowboarding game, the first flight simulator. There's still so much empty, uh, open possibilities. And, and, and the idea also is, is really um, experimentation. Uh, you know, the cost of experimentation in traditional development is super high. Again, if I want to experiment myself, not being a developer, good luck, right? I need to coerce, convince, uh, bribe other people to help me. Otherwise, it's still going to stay in my head on paper. Uh, whereas here, you know, I can do something super fast and test it with my friends, with my family, with the community at large. Again, I, I want to go back to the fact that uh, we have an extremely supportive community. There are really almost no wrong questions to ask, even if you're a complete newbie to game creation, game development. People, people will help you to to very, very high extents in the community. And of course we're here for, for that too, right? So experiment, try new things. Um, and, and again, don't stop. That's the thing, right? There are some games that were launched first day, we look at them and oh, it's very nascent. It's very, very young. It's very, uh, you know, it's, 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 of course it's absolutely highly imperfect, but guess what? It was already original, it was already fun. Next hour, the creator, does something different, adds something next day, and so on and so forth. Uh, and then let alone after a few days, after a few weeks, after a few months. Just like, you know, the fact that parallel with score, right? We're just in open alpha. So it's just a, a few few weeks, a few months old, and you can already see the level of creativity. So really, don't, don't be shy. Uh, there are multiple ways to make games in core, not just technically, but creatively, and also multiple ways to engage with the audience. All right. Uh, next question. Is there going to be something done about uh, name sniping, which has been happening? <laughs> um, so, um, yes. So one, one thing we're going to do is this is actually quite normal in game industry. And we're going to follow that as well. It's a, a best practice is we're uh, very soon is going to look at the dormanted accounts right and then we're going to make the usernames available to uh, uh, available again so which will actually remedy this this is actually quite a simple problem oh awesome um here is another one this was asked in chat actually um this is from leah will there eventually be two-factor authorization for accounts oh uh, yes Yes we, we, yes. we yes we we have that already on some aspects and then yes we will have that yes yeah. awesome. the, 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 the thing i want to say also is you know, as, as i mentioned before like we're, we're, we 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 launched the creators open alpha just a few months ago right mm. three, 3 to 4 months ago so you know welcome to being live welcome to the journey uh, it's not just exciting for us it should be also very exciting for you so again plot it out right like lots of the features really start you know, version 1.0 or uh, the beginning, etc. So we'll have like every week we release new things, right? As you can see, the, the exemplary ex exemplified by this week, where we have like even I forget like when I have to list like I have a list somewhere of all the things we're doing this week. 
So plot it out. Q3 is going to be the, the third quarter is extremely, extremely packed with new features, new systems. And so just plot it out. And, um, and, and you know, please, one, you know, uh, forgive us when things are, you know, not working properly or imperfect. It's, it's a journey, right? We could have waited to launch until maybe uh, next year. We didn't. Uh, it's part of the journey. It's part of the, the same interaction I was mentioning with you between the creators and the players. Well, it's the same here between, between you and, and, and us in terms of explaining, in terms of being transparent, in terms of adding new things every day that sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work, sometimes it needs to be perfected. But uh, yes. <laughs> Excellent. All right. Well, we are uh, running out of time. Um, we didn't get to all of the questions uh, for which I apologize, but I hope you did get um, your most pressing questions answered. Um, Arash, Frederick, Jordan, any closing thoughts before we wrap up? Do you want to go first, uh, Arash, then Tasha, then Jordan? Um, so one thing I want to emphasize is, uh, so as Frederick mentioned, like we are, we're in alpha, so you can expect a lot of new feature, new systems, a lot of changes coming to the, uh, to the core as the, uh, on the platform. So, um, it's actually quarter this quarter and, um, the next quarter is going to be amazing. We're super excited for, to hear what you guys think about the, uh, the, the features, uh, and everything that we're um, actually going to launch very, very soon. Um, uh, other aspect is I am always, always surprised of the uh, the creativity I see from the community. So it's it's really refreshing and energizing that what I see from um, all the games and the community. So um, 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 it, it's amazing. Yeah, and uh, I'll echo that. Um, you know, I often go into the Discord. I often go into the games and talk with the creators, and everyone is so positive and creative. Uh, I'm really happy we've been able to provide this sort of platform for people who didn't think they could be game designers. Uh, as a game designer myself, everyone always says like, "Oh, I've got this great game idea, but I don't know how to program. I don't know how to do art. I don't know how to do all these things." And Core is sort of really the answer to that. Um, it's it's hard to overstate um, how fa how much faster it is to make games in core just as one example really fast we have one creator who says that he's been working on a, a game that idea that he had for more than two years in another engine and in two weeks he was able to get as far as he got uh in core uh as he did with the other engine so that's that's really sort of heartwarming uh i think we're also going to show the trailer one more time uh yes. before we log off so uh so get ready for that uh should i show it now or should you want to uh, 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 uh tasha Natasha, uh, oh, um, uh, yeah, before <laughs> we show it, um, I just want to uh, highlight uh, the announcements uh, we shared earlier at the stream. Uh, so Arash uh, wrote a new What's Next blog post, and you guys can find it at um, manticoregames.com slash news. Uh, we also have the Spaceship and Mech contest coming up, and y'all can find more information about that on our Discord. And there is a uh, Discord invite in our Twitch bio down below. Uh, we also have the new gameplay trailer, which obviously Jordan will show right after this. And then uh, round two of Core Game Dev Bootcamp applications now open, and you can go to learn.coregames.com slash bootcamp uh, for more information and to apply there. Um, and then I think without further ado, um, unless there are any other closing thoughts, um, let's roll the trailer again. Uh, one last thing uh, <laughs> for the trailer. I think... Um, Again, bring your creativity. Um, you know, today was a lot about the top creators that we invited to this stream, obviously. But keep bringing your creativity, bring your friends. The next weeks, the next months are going to be more and more about the players, okay? We're going to see more and more players joining the platform until then, until now. We've been focusing a lot on creators and we still will. But, um, you know, we're going to see lots of players coming to the platform and also an invitation for you that if you have an audience, and again, if you don't, then start building it up, right? Everybody starts from something. Uh, today, I was talking with a top streamer on Twitch, and you know, she started a few years ago, and she had nobody, and it took her like maybe six months to get to several tens of thousands of followers. So it's the same in core, right? Bring your audience, and if not, create it, uh, engage with it. Um, so the next months are going to be really, really packed. And really, thank you so much for for being present, for being supportive, and uh, it's just the open alpha. So. Uh, Lots of cool stuff um, in the pipes for us and then for you in the next weeks, months. Thank you. Yeah, awesome. Thank you so much for your question, guys. And um, the trailer. Done. Done.
no, I was just gonna say, roll that trailer!